we're going to do a round robin kind of talk about um, magic for the resistance, things that you can do um, to dismantle patriarchy, to um, get rid of authoritarian governments and um, try to um, rectify our democracy here in the United States. So I was saying to Onoreo, take it away and he will take it away. So what, what kind of um, ideas do you have about spells or things or suggestions for people? Yeah, so I think uh, one of the first things is to kind of like clear the mind of like, what is it that you're resisting, right? And and to have a clear mindset when you're doing any type of spell work, which is something we generally do, but sometimes we let our like our passion take over and then we forget what is it that we're trying to achieve. And I, I feel like that kind of scatters the energy that we're trying to build for any type of spell, right? Specifically when you're trying to find like a particular target to, so maybe making a list of like things like, we, I was talking with the, you know, Buchanan uh, maybe yesterday or the day before when we were saying like, you know, depending on where you live, your situation is going to be different too. You know, some people live in a more liberal state and they're, it doesn't mean that they shouldn't care, but I mean, they're affected in different ways. So maybe you want to, you want to think about how that's affecting you in a, in, in like a state level versus like what's going to happen, you know, and and kind of like start working small, right? But I would say before any type of spell work, I would do like a cleansing bath and you know and and get some cleansing herbs and things like that that are um for um you know purifying, right? Purifying our energy. So we can use white flowers, we can use hyssop, we can use any, you know, you sell some spell kits at the Heart of Wonders, which are uh, spell baths, which are amazing. And there's also like bat salts. So that's kind of like energetic purification, bam bam. Kind of like change the luck also and uh powerful protection very very uh useful and very powerful um hence the name um <laughs> but i also think um besides that then um i think that our our agency feels like it's been tampered with you know so i think like uh empowerment like right like we use like um hi john the conquer route right and and carry that with you and kind of like uh, give it, um, and I'm giving like simple things that are not super complicated, right? Spell work and kind of like talk to the root, talk to the, you know, carry it or maybe a mojo back and, and <clears throat> sorry, and put some, some of your personal belongings there and carry it with you or a Queen Elizabeth, right? Whatever feel, whoever feels more comfortable with that to kind of like regain that agency and feel like not all is lost, even though it feels like it, right? And, and you do, you still have agency, uh, with the things that are going to, you know, with, with how you're going to tackle things, I guess, right? Um, the other thing, which was an inspiration from you, um, if you work with tarot, and I don't know if you're going to talk about this, if not, stop me now, but oh, um, right. if you work with tarot, you, uh, um, Pam does uh, a, a class that I, I took once, which was the spell packets, you know, uh, with tarot cards. Um, so like you choose cards, like let's, I just chose this two, for example, right? And if you want to affect someone's um, confidence and someone <laughs> someone's power, right? You might choose cards like this, and then put their name, uh, uh, photo, or whatever inside, and then put some uh, powder herbs or some sachet powder that also we have. A, a, they have at the shop. You see, I still work there. Um, <laughs> and um, and you can keep this, right? And you can put it. I I mean, sometimes you have to get nasty, and like you can put it. On, the, on your litter box, you know, <laughs> where, where the cat, you know, you can go and put it under a pile of dog poop, you know, um, you can put it in uh, ant hill, you know, you can put it in, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do. You can put it behind your toilet. And I know that sounds kind of nasty, but like this, this is what's going on in our country, right? So we have to kind of like think about, we cannot be like, oh, you know, this is, I don't, you know, whatever your level of comfort, right? Um, and, you know, the intention would be, obviously, it's someone that's tied, right? Like, they don't think they can do, you know, you, you're kind of tying them, right? And you're giving them nightmares. You're giving them anxiety also. So they're on, you know, they can't move. They can't make clear decisions. And that's kind of like a good way to start. But I'm going to let you guys go. And then if we have some that's more. A great, that's a great suggestion. And you don't even have, if you have a tarot deck and you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to take out two cards of my tarot deck, you can print out 
those images from online. Just find the, the Eight of Swords, the Nine of Swords, if you want to do that one, or images of tarot cards that are um, binding, like Eight of Swords, or um, kind of crushing the confidence with Nine of Swords. You know, I think that that works really well. Put the names of the people, you know, who was number one and all, mm -hmm. all of his cronies <laughs> and all of the appointments of the people. That would be a great thing to do, right? <laughs> to write that on a piece of paper and stick that inside. Um, some other herbs that you could put inside there could be things like um, sulfur, asafoetida, asafoetida, asafoetida uh, um, vandal root, vandal root. Val valerian root. These are ones that <laughs> smell bad. Everyone hates it when somebody at the parlor wonders opens those jars, but these are the ones that smell bad that can drive out negativity and, and, um, crush that, um, that, that. Yeah, but in the freezer also freezer spells are amazing. They're very powerful and people kind of underestimate them and they really are very powerful. You can put yeah. it in between some, some limes or lemons and stick it with pins and put it there and leave it there in the back of the freezer. And like, yeah. it really, it really, it's very powerful. Yeah. Or as we get into winter and if you're in a so snowy climate, you could mm -hmm. push it outside and let it freeze and, and rot into the ground. You know, that's another thing. Great suggestions on Um Thank you. Ms. Kelly, what do you have? Um, um, well, my first thoughts were like, like on was saying like cleansing for me, it's grounding. How do you, cause I'm a great, catastrophic thinker and oh my gosh I'm worrying about the future and then I have to like stop and come back to myself and remind myself that you can't you can't really do that and just and as an astrologer one of the first things I learned was you don't really predict a year out you know you because you, you can't really predict a year out you can kind of see things coming but people have free will and things like that so my catastrophic thinking I have to tell myself you know stop it you can't even do that. You can't even do that with the young, with the stuff that you do for yourself. So finding ways to ground yourself, keeping yourself centered, trying to, um, and like cleansing, like Honoré is talking about cleansing, cleansing yourself from social media, I think will be really powerful because there's this huge onslaught of just everybody freaking out right now. And that's going to wash over you. So like giving yourself borders, like empathetic, like leaning into the borders of your empathy and what's happening, like finding ways to do that with my Virgo moon talking for you. And then I would say um, with astrology, like there's so many things you can do just with the moon, right? To lean into how that works. So learning how waxing and waning moon works, how you can take any spell and make it work for whatever phase of the moon is. I think people get hung up and think, oh my gosh, the moon's wax or waning, so I can't possibly do something that's gonna to pull something towards me. But you just have to rephrase that, right? You just have to rephrase it and turn it into let me take something negative away so I can open up a path, right? So I would really encourage people to learn how to work with that energy because it's very very simple. It's I think it's far more simple than people th realize. Yeah, it, the you know sometimes people think oh the w waxing moon is the only moon and the waning moon mm -hmm. have to sit at, out. No, this is a time you can re release and get rid of things. You can banish things, which is a great for what we're doing banishing, <laughs> banishing corruption, banishing um, disinformation, banishing authoritarianism, <laughs> banishing all these things. So yes. you can do that. And then during the waxing moon, after the new moon. And bring things into the light. I want to, yeah. we want to bring everything to the light. Like let's let people see what's really happening. Yeah. Use the full moon for that. Like, yeah. Like, and yeah. then, so and then bring in that energy of during the waxing moon of like justice and truth and freedom and empowerment and equality and all of the, the qualities that we do want to bring in during that time. For sure. I think of that as really the full, like what, what, Onorea was saying is like you do a cleanse before you do the work you do a waning moon spell before you do the waxing moon. like get rid of that stuff and work to get rid of that stuff before you bring in the new thing that you want to bring in you make space yeah you make space yeah um love witch what do you have for us um first i wanted to say if you're afraid of doing baneful magic or you know don't want to work with those scary cards you can do those tarot packets 
Um, in other ways too, like using the strength card to strengthen and support communities that are in need, right? Or using cards that are about victory to support candidates that are running against these assholes. So there's lots of like work you can do on the other side too. Um, if you're worried about weighing yourself down and if you're worried about that, you need to watch the video from last week about why you shouldn't be worried about that because all of this is positive work. All of this is work to support people who are in need. Um, but don't forget you can do those other things too. Um, right before we started today, I was reading through this book called Magic for the Resistance um, by Michael Hughes. I think it's out of print now, but there are ways of finding copies um, and maybe they'll bring it back in print because what a great- I think it's Llewellyn, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I saw some great stuff in there. It was particularly about creating um, like public altars. So maybe in spaces where, like if you know of a community who's gonna be really affected. So creating a little community altar, even if no one knows about it, but to bring some energy and some protection to that space. Um, you could do this at like community centers, um, gay bars, like all kinds of places where you could hide these and bring some magical protection to those people. Um, you know, you can also do like protection magic for groups of people. You can do money magic for organizations and for fundraisers. You can do success spells for candidates who are running who um, have the same morals as you do. I think another really good thing to focus on right now is um, shielding and invisibility work. So if you took that full moon class a few months back, um, you know all about that. I'm going to publish a blog article later this week, um, and I'll put it up on our um, hexthepatriarchy.com landing page. Um, so check that out later this week. And we're adding all sorts of resources to that page, so make sure you're going there often. Um, you'll find all the like products that we're recommending there, but also all the videos that we're publishing on these topics are going to be posted there um, and all kinds of other stuff too. So keep checking that page. And in looking, right? Just said the book was. Oh, sorry, the book was magic for re the resistance, right? Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah. You can also take those tarot spell packets, and one of the things you know I talk about when I've taught the class in the past is that they're easy to hide places, so you don't have to build a full-on altar. You could take that little packet and like hide it behind something or put it in some you know place, and it can be a positive one. Like you could, a great card is the sun card. The sun card is about shining the light of the sun, showing the truth. And that can be, or the justice card could be a, a wonderful card. That that packet, sun card and justice card, that is like a one-two punch that would be amazing, like to put it in that direction. Um, even one that, of the, cut up a tarot card or a picture what? of it. You can even cut one up or burn one and mix it in with like sachet powder or something. Yeah, and then sprinkle, sprinkle around, around those. Yeah, cool. yeah. I think one of the things that I'm thinking about and I have been thinking about this week in terms of spell work and spell intentions for... Um, the resistance is to, um, we have an opportunity. We have a great opportunity. If you observe what is happening, there's like an opportunity for creating um, backbiting and chaos within that organization, which is already kind of happening. Like, let, like, think about this, how effective, yeah, five of wands energy, right? Um, think how effective is a group if they're all bickering amongst each other. They're not effective at all. They cannot get their agenda across because this one doesn't want it this way and that one wants it the other way. And so nothing happens. There is a standstill. So I think about spells and intentions of spells being for creating um, backbiting, chaos, um, uh, no stability in this um in this organization so that they cannot be effective, right? So that they're working against one another. And so in that case, nothing gets done. And we're already seeing, as I was thinking about this, like at the beginning of last week, we're already seeing the possibilities of that because that idiot is trying to um, push through his nominees at a time when, when the Senate is in recess. This is not, there's no, the rules say you can only do that if this is like an emergency. This is not an emergency. And so by him trying to push that back, it is offending the Republicans who are more moderate and it is offending people who are believing in our democracy as it is, right? So the fact that we have this resistance within the Republican party can be enhanced by spell work that we do to create this backbiting, bickering, and, and infighting that will cause a complete blockage. I mean, I'm picturing like constipation 
happy <laughs> that total constipation where nothing moves nothing happens he's not effective he's not getting support and these things aren't going through so this can be um a great um a great way to also put that intention out there so even if you don't want to hex which i have we've talked about before um we're not i don't think none of us are wiccan right I don't think any of you are Wiccan, right? So we're not yeah. Wiccan. We don't follow the rule of three. The rule of three was something that was invented in the 1950s, as we were talking about, or Rayo and I were talking about, at a time when witches were feared and misunderstood. And the, and the 1950s, um, you know, Gerald Gardner and company were trying to get witchcraft accepted. And so the rule of three is like, we're good people. We're not hexing people. We're not cursing people. But if you look at folk magic, the, the, the Babas in Ukraine handing cursed sunflower seeds to the Russian soldiers that are coming through town, they aren't worried about the rule of three. And prior to the 1950s, nobody was, nobody practicing folk magic was worried about the rule of three. So if you're a Wiccan and you ascribe to that, that's totally fine. You can work on justice. You can work on so many things that these uh, lies are brought to, that the truth is told and these lies are brought to the surface and that people believe the truth. That's the other thing. We can shout the truth, but if people aren't believing lies, we have to have like open their ears. So we can do all kinds of spells that are not hexing spells. But if you're a folk magician, you get to decide for yourself what's your ethics. And so if you want to hex, if you want to curse, you can do that. And cursing, cursing this atrocity is not a problem in my, for my personal ethics. Absolutely in that. So anyway, um, any last thoughts before we start answering questions, you guys? Yeah, I, I was going to say something that I told you when we were speaking, when you were, when we were talking about that law. It's like uh, Sybil Leak, which was a very uh, famous witch. Um, uh, and I don't think she considered herself Wiccan either. But she, she um, I read a quote somewhere that said, you know, evil allowed to exist harms everybody. And I think that when we have this thought of... Um, you're not cursing someone just because you want to curse them. You know, you're 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 doing this type of work to prevent them from harming somebody. You know, and I think uh, or harming a lot of people, which I, we know that there's a lot of people with a, a target in their back, even people who voted for him. You know, so and 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 whether we feel like oh that's not uh, you know good good riddance or whatever for them, right? Uh, if they voted for him, I think in general we 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 have to really think about what's, what that's going to cost to, you know, cost us, you know, and what's that going to cost to us, you know? So um, that's a one way to think about this type of work without feeling bad about it. But I have, I do have a thing where it, that this comes from hoodoo, which is after you do some type of cursing work, you take a bath with hyssop, you know, to, <laughs> to uh, atone and to cleanse because it's biblical, right? And you might not believe in the Bible or whatever, but you can, you know, you can, you can uh, do that too, if it makes you, you know, uh, feel more peaceful at heart, you know? Yeah. We talked about this last week and I said, oh, there you I go. Sorry. Use, <laughs> yeah. People were asking like cleansing herbs. And I said, um, I use lemongrass. I'm not a hyssop gal, but people do use hyssop, but I'm not a Bible person. I'm not, you know, I don't believe in Christianity. I don't believe it. It's a, whatever. It's not my thing. So I don't, believe in the Bible and I don't believe in those things, but there are people that do. And I do believe the herb hyssop has cleansing power, regardless of what they talk about in the Bible. But I don't believe the concept of like, this is a sin to stop yeah. this government. So yeah. I'm not worried about removing sin. And that's what hyssop is to remove sin. Yeah. This is a sin. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's your choice, whatever you want to do. And you can use it, even if you're not a hoodoo practitioner, of course, mm -hmm. you can this up. If you, if it, if you feel like you need to cleanse yourself of what, you know, maybe even cleanse yourself of your anger, you know, or your, your, um, your deep rage, if rage is good, but if it's eating away at you and you can't stop it, maybe that's another thing that hyssop can also relieve you of that as well. So excellent. Um, Anybody else have any last comments and we'll get to questions. Um, I just wanted to share something that I saw in the comments on our YouTube page, actually, which someone was saying that she makes um, handmade wands out of various um, 
like trees that are in her area. And there's a lot of trees that have the natural ability to protect like teak, birch, cedar, and pine. Um, so even if you're not making a wand, getting a little bit of that wood and keeping it close to you, keeping it on your person when you travel or keeping it in your car could be a really good thing to do right now. Um, and that's something that's super discreet and free. So I just wanted to share that because yeah. I thought it was such a great tip from the comments. Yeah, exactly. Witchcraft, witchcraft is free and you can do things, mm -hmm. so many things with things in nature. Of course, it's fun to do candle spells and all these other things, but you can also do witchcraft with things that you find in the supermarket or that you get in nature. It doesn't have to be, um, every spell doesn't have to be a big, a full-blown candle spell or big, you know, things. And you can do witchcraft with things that you find. Absolutely. 